What's up guys? So we are starting the DIY videos with this 1991 Corsair F27 right now. This is the first DIY, I guess, official DIY video where I actually do something on camera. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. And what we need to do is repair that hull damage that I outlined in the last video about this boat. If you haven't seen that yet, I'd go back and watch it to get, you know, kind of a detailed view of everything that is going on with the hull on this boat and how I'm gonna fix it. But I think we just need to go ahead and get started. Now, the very first thing that I need to do is to get this boat opened up so I need to extend out the amas and I do have enough space in my side yard here right next to my house so that's awesome I've repositioned the trailer so that it should be able to open up just fine I've also gone ahead and bought these safety stands from Harbor Freight the reason I bought these instead of traditional boat stands well cost one traditional boat stand was like the same price as all four of these at Harbor Freight. So I think these are gonna be okay because they're two ton total capacity. The boat doesn't even weigh two tons. So, you know, they're only gonna be holding a very small percentage of their total working load limit. So I think it'll be okay. But first, as you can see, before I open up the boat, there are a couple things that need to be done. I do have the stands, but I need to cut some plywood for the base of these stands because you know, those feet are just gonna dig into that gravel. So I've got to spread the load out. And then also up here, there is this saddle, but I'm also gonna cut a piece of plywood for the top. And then I have some foam that's gonna go on top of that as well. So I'm gonna distribute the weight on the beam very well and it shouldn't damage the beam in any way whatsoever so i've got this sheet i believe it's 3 8 plywood it only cost me about 350 dollars at home depot really really good deal and yeah let's get started All right, obviously these cuts don't have to be completely exact, but I think I did a pretty good job right there. All right, looks like they all fit. So let's go ahead and make these top pieces as well as cut the foam. So these top pieces are gonna sit under the beam at about right here. So I wanna make them about as wide as the beam. So that's, it's about a foot. So I guess I'll make them 12 by 12 squares. So I think this is looking pretty good. Obviously I'm not going for super ultra accuracy, otherwise I would have actually used, you know, a pencil and a straight edge and stuff. But so I think that's gonna spread the load out there really well. And what's nice is look, I can just go whoop and it goes up. Then I can also adjust it down here. I think all the way up to like 90 inches. So these stands are really versatile. And the last thing I need to do is cut the foam. So I picked up this DIY insulation kit from Home Depot and it's definitely more than enough foam, you know, than what I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out. It almost looks like it's already, you know, the right width, maybe a little bit wider than what I need. I'm just gonna cut out sections and then I'm probably gonna put two layers of foam on each piece of plywood there. And that should be more than enough to really help distribute the weight and not damage those beams. I got this ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous Bowie knife from Harbor Freight as well. I, I feel like this is a Harbor Freight commercial, but I mean, it's actually pretty cool. Like in the handle here, it's got like a waterproof compartment. There's a compass right there. And then it's got a little baggy matches, fishing line, a button, thread, a pin. This was $5. So I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious. I'm gonna use this knife to cut the foam. Why? Because I can. All 
All right, so I think that right there is perfect. All right, guys, I'm on deck of the boat and there is one last thing that I need to do before I open up these amas. And let me show you what that is. So each of the four beams should have what is called a compression pad that is supposed to go right here. And I believe, you know, from the factory, they were made out of plastic, but this is what's left of that compression pad. It's um, very brittle. As you can see, it just, it breaks now. So it's just super weathered and these compression pads need to be replaced on every one of these beams before I open the boat. So I went ahead and ordered G10 as a replacement for these compression pads, which is you know recommended by a lot of Corsair owners. It's essentially a plate that you can install here that is epoxy and fiberglass and it should last a lot longer than the original compression pads. I'm gonna replace what was here with that, but I need to open up the boat now and I want to get started on the fiberglass repair in the hull. So what I'm going to do is make temporary compression pads out of composite shims so that I can open up the boat and, you know, work on the interior of the boat. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you have it. Temporary compression pads. Alrighty. The temporary compression pads are in place. So now there's nothing really stopping me from opening this boat so the process to opening up the boat on the trailer first requires the lowering of these bunks so there's six bolts holding these bunks on each side in place but as you can see the trailer is pretty old so who knows if they will be able to come loose or not so I may or may not be able to do that but we got to try all right I got a big old breaker bar in my right hand and a wrench to my left and let's see if this will break and that was surprisingly easy, wow. Okay, well let's try the top one. The top one has that type of head, so. Yep, that broke too. Okay, well, maybe this will be easier than I thought. Miraculously, everything cooperated and I got the bunks lowered so that they're no longer touching this outer float. All right guys, I think we may actually be ready to open up this side of the boat, the starboard side. So, got the stands at the ready. I've got sawhorses at the ready as well for the bottom of the hull, maybe just to help me out a little bit. Everything is clear. The compression pads are in. You know, there's nothing to bind anything up. And the biggest thing is I've tied the port side. So I've tied the port side AMA to the trailer. So that's gonna hopefully prevent the boat from toppling over when I undo the starboard side armor right here. So let's see what happens. Hope this goes well, but you know, what's the worst that can happen? I dropped the boat on the ground, right? That's, eh, we'll see. guys I think that looks pretty good I mean it certainly feels good and really nothing crazy has gone wrong yet I do want to flip that stand the other way other than that I think it looks good it's nice to see the boat you know look more like a boat Forgot to mention I did support the transom here with some cinder blocks and some plywood and foam. Alrighty guys, I got everything on the port side ready. I've got the AMA untied and I've got my sawhorses ready for the float and then obviously my stands are right there ready to be stood up and put under the beams. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully the boat doesn't topple over. Boom, success. Boat is fully open now. Nice and supported. <laughs> As you can see, it rocked a little bit to one side. 
cool well i can probably tighten those up a little bit and then tighten the other ones and that'll rock the boat back to the other side so cool so the boat is fully supported at five points one point under each beam and one point under the dagger board compartment right there the trailer is completely free it's not attached anymore I can just move the trailer. I can actually remove the trailer if I wanted to. And as I hope you guys can kind of see, it may not come up on camera, but the main hull now is not on the bunks at all anymore. There's about a centimeter of air gap between these bunks and the outer hull, and that's exactly what I want. So now that I've got the pressure off the main hull from those bunks, I can now start cutting inside the boat. And you know, knowing that the boat is fully supported off of the main hull, that is gonna mean that when I do the repair and I reglass everything, once I'm done, all of those repairs are going to dry in the right way. And then I can finally, you know, repair the bunks and work on the trailer and put the boat back on the trailer. So all of this is just step one of properly tackling the interior hull laminate repair. All right guys, let's go ahead and go up and let me show you what I've got going on up there. So first off, as you guys can tell, the boat is wide open now and you can see the full 19 feet of beam. This is just awesome. I can't wait till this boat is on the water and we have it opened up like this and we're sailing because this is just a lot of space. The next thing I want to show you guys is this phenomenal duct tape job right here that is holding this vent in place. Now that's going to be the portable air conditioner. Let's go inside and take a look at what's going on down there. All right, guys, I just got down below and this beautiful thing is an 8000 BTU portable air conditioner and this thing, although it probably sounds kind of loud on camera, you guys are just going to have to deal with it because this is going to make my life a heck of a lot easier and it's going to make this job bearable. It is really comfortable in this boat right now because of that. The next thing I want to show you guys is this scope camera right here. Now this thing is absolutely awesome. Look, you've got a little light. There's a 1080p screen right there you can see what's going on i went ahead and i used it to take a look at the bilge areas obviously i know there's damage in this area here there's damage back there but i really wanted to take a hard look at under the floorboards here and then going forward of that i wanted to take a look at this area here so all of this is you know hard to access but that scope camera really afforded me the ability to get a good look at this entire area here. So I can actually show you guys what I saw on this camera directly and I don't have to, you know, film a screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that footage right now. So the quality isn't the best and I kind of feel like we're looking at footage from another planet here. But as you can see, the laminate looks good, albeit a bit dirty. All right guys, so the sun is getting lower in the sky. It is getting cooler outside. This air conditioner is becoming more efficient at cooling because of that. So I think it's sea day. I think it is the day to start cutting up this cabin sole. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, guys, I got that running. I've got my oscillating tool ready. I've got my Tyvek suit on. I am ready and then I've got this guy. So here is the damage report. I went ahead and cut out that big section of the cabin sole there. I do not think that below my feet here, I don't think there's any need for me to keep cutting going forward. I think that all of that under there, all the way up to the very forepeak, that's all good. The only spot that needs attention is in that buoyancy chamber in the very bow of the boat. 
That I'm gonna do last. That's probably the least structural part of any of this. So I think that from my foot here forward, aside from that buoyancy compartment up there, that's all good. Now, back here, what I can see is we've got cracking, obviously, along the starboard side there. Not so much on the port side, okay? Not so much on the port side. Surprisingly here, I cut out like a little sample piece and the balsa core that's, you know, about yay wide that goes all the way down the center line of the boat, that is dry right here. That surprises me, especially with the shoddy repair, you know, right there. So obviously all of this area is gonna get repaired by me. All of that is gonna get repaired, but it looks like the core, you know, on the sides here, the Divini cell foam core is actually fine. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing any recoring of any Divini cell, which is phenomenal. That that's that's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and go more aft and I'll show you that aft buoyancy compartment. So obviously I went ahead and I cut out a pretty large section. I do think I'm going to have to cut out a slightly larger section. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on down here. Now I think the damage down here is at its worst because I think that this is really where the water pooled. Right there is actually where the balsa stringer ends. So the balsa stringer goes right up until that horizontal line that you can see and then it becomes foam as you go aft. Now as you can see, there is significant cracking back here. So the glass needs to be grinded away a little bit, but I think the core below it is fine, at least you know, from what I can tell. It's all Divini cell, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do any recoring of any Divini cell back here, which again is phenomenal. I, I am so happy that that's the case. I'm so happy that they used mainly Divini cell for the core here. I'm, I'm a true believer now. So, you know, I'm gonna be grinding away some glass. I'm definitely gonna be recoring the wet balsa there. That part that you're looking at is wet, and I think it gets drier as you go forward, because as you guys saw, you know, forward of this, there is dry balsa. So we can't really assume that all of the balsa is wet. And then also I wanted to show you, you know, where the balsa ends right here and the Divini cell starts. That is dry Divini cell right there. So that's absolutely awesome. I'll give you guys one more look at what I did just now. Cut up that major section of the cabin sole as well as a pretty big section of the buoyancy compartment back there. All right, guys, I do want to say that I am I am pretty much ecstatic that, you know, this damage does not seem to be as extensive as I was thinking. You know, how many times can you tear into a boat expecting the worst and it actually be better than you expected? That doesn't happen that often on boats. And I think that it's a testament to the build quality of these Corsairs here. Obviously the balsa where it got you know really wet and it sat, that rotted out. I'm gonna replace the wet parts of the stringer with new end grain balsa. None of this Divini cell, I don't think any of it needs to be replaced. I am like a true believer in this Divini cell now. You know, this is a 30 year old boat. There was obviously problems with water intrusion and the core is still good. I mean, that says something. So this was an awesome day. Not only did I figure out that I don't think I have to do anything to the forward section of this boat, except for that forward buoyancy compartment. I also found out when I cut away these two sections that the damage is just not as extensive as I had thought and the repair is going to be easier than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, this is a good day in boat repair. So you might be asking what I plan on doing next. And well, 
I've got to go ahead and I've got to order some fiberglass. So I did end up hearing back from Corsair and they actually advised me on what fabrics I should be using for this repair as well as the thicknesses of the coring material that I need to be using. It's half inch balsa and half inch Divini Cell five pound density. They also let me know that I need to be using two layers of 12 ounce by axle with a 90 zero orientation. So the entire bilge has one layer of 12 ounce fabric and then you know the center portion of the bilge has another layer of 12 ounce fabric. So that's gonna have two layers of fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of try to match that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how I'm gonna rebuild this cabin sole back here. And then after that, I've gotta fix you know the damage in the buoyancy compartment in the forward section of the boat. But yeah, I'm really optimistic about this and I'm excited to bring you guys along with me on this journey. That's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell if you want to know each and every time we drop a video. See you guys. Before I end this video, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see the outline of the old name on this boat. And the old name is Desperado. I kind of like it. I'm thinking we're going to keep that name. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my